Thank you for joining us for Still Speaking, a podcast from Ivanhoe Congregational Church. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. We are a United Church of Christ in Mundelein, Illinois, and an open and affirming congregation. This podcast aims to explore scripture through conversation with the purpose of discovering new insights and enhancing individual faith practices. God is still speaking, and we are all listening to discern a message for today and deepen our faith. Hi, thank you for joining us this week for Still Speaking. This is the podcast from Ivanhoe Congregational Church, and I am Shelley Grow here with our pastor, Chris Hewitt. This is episode 62, and interestingly, a couple days ago on Facebook, I got one of those reminders, um, a flashback, and it was from two years ago, and it was a photo of you and I here yes, in your office, and we were celebrating our 10th episode. Right on. I can't believe we've been doing this for two years now. I think it's great. You know, we've had some breaks here and there, but to have, uh, you know, the balance of the rhythm kind of say we've done one every two weeks, I think is awesome. Um, we've gotten some uh, recent feedback on uh, that people love it. Our most recent episode went out to wider community because of Red Ribbon Week. It was included in a, in a newsletter from one of our local um, substance abuse prevention groups. And so I'm so glad um, that you talked me into doing it and that Barry supports us and that the community uh, receives it well. And uh, thank you for your commitment to it. Uh, I'm very grateful for this experience. Same. So this week, the title is How Then Shall We Give? Uh, but before we really get into the scripture and the topic, is there anything that you want to check in with what's going on in the world or in the community? You know, I uh, maybe I flow into those rhythms of the seasons, um, you know, a step ahead of people because I always got to be looking ahead on the calendar um, seasonally and preparing for church stuff. So uh, November draws us towards Thanksgiving and and thinking about gratitude. Um, We at Ivanhoe do our stewardship season a little bit earlier, but a lot of churches will be doing their stewardship season here in November. So it's um, gratitude comes up on the calendar for for them um but i i think that's that's my choice of of my default like i just want to begin with gratitude i want to start with thanksgiving um with relationships with community um with my personal faith life so it's actually um we have a model of giving that we need to look a little bit deeper so in this story um I think throughout the Bible, we realize Jesus sees things differently. You know, God has a a bigger uh, perspective than we do. um, And we're invited to kind of unpack this story in in different ways. And we can uh, walk through that and and ask questions and, you know, invite our uh, listeners into this conversation. Uh, You know, anytime you want to send feedback, uh, you can do that via email or even just call the church office and, and talk to me. I'm sure Shelly would be glad to talk to you as well. But that's, you know, the whole point of why we started this is that we want you to feel part of this conversation. And, um, you know, I got some little nerdy Bible geek uh, insights into the scripture, but it's all about, you know, that question, how then shall we live? It's always about the so what? What does this have to do with my life, the life of my family, the community, how how does this impact me on a day-to-day basis? And ultimately, that comes down to um, how we treat our neighbor, how we uh, receive God's love, how we share God's love, and what we uh, do and how we live it out. And hopefully, um, these challenges will also bring you comfort. Um, you know, It'll make you think about how to find more joy in your life. Um, I never want anybody to feel like we're heavy-handed and make people feel guilty. It's about um, choosing how to, what you want to do, how you want to do it, and hopefully find joy in the journey. Okay. So this week we're looking at Mark 12, um, 38 to 44. So do you want to read that for us? Sure. And we can talk about it a little bit. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogue and the places of honor at banquets. 
they devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury, and many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth about a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. You got a first impression? I probably have like four at the okay. same time, which is, so I'm trying to sort through where to start. But, um, you know, there's a similarity between the story of um, the person who had been storing all of their grains and everything in barns. Yes. The story is going to be more familiar to you than it is to me. But um, just the the thought that it does nothing to sit on what you have, um, but that anything that comes to us is to be, I think, reinvested into our community and into others. And just to have that faith that God will take care of us. Mm. Yeah. So you went, you went right to, I think the takeaway that Jesus is asking us and asking his disciples. So they've been called over and over to leave everything and follow him to give all that they have to trust their lives to, God to the way that he is modeled, that Jesus is modeling. Um, and there's been questions and concerns. And here's another example of someone who, who gave it all. And that's what they've been called to do. But what, um, I mean, how do you hear it as a, as a person in 2021? Um, <clears throat> you know, and I feel like we've talked about this before and it, and it, probably needs to be talked about all the time but like we many of us um live comfortably right and so i think there's always that tension of um how much of that is okay yes so your your first um your first impression was about the model of the woman's faith and trust mm-hmm. Um, now you're going to, I think, a little bit of where Jesus's concern is. So if we divide the scripture in two, we have first a critique of of the scribes, you know, the Pharisees, the whatever. Let's say me, the pastor, you know, wearing a long robe, uh, wanting the best seat, saying long prayers for the sake of appearance. You know. um, so the critique of a religious professional as they devour widow's house. So this is like the lowest of the low, taking advantage of the people who are most vulnerable. The mm-hmm. Bible invites us to always be concerned with those who have no one else to take care of them. The orphan, the widow, the orphan, and the, the sojourner, the refugee. You know, people who have nobody else. Like literally status, you know, women did not, they couldn't own property. They were always um, needing to be taken care of. Obviously an orphan would need people to be taken care of if you're a refugee you know, left your community, you need care. These widows have, if, if the church was taking somebody's house and leaving them, you know, abandoning them, that's just terrible, right? The lowest of the low. So that's the critique. And then on the other hand, the second half of the story sets her up as the model of faith. So you, your first impression was let's lifting her up and out. How do you feel about that second half? The, is is this more of a ca- condemnation or equally a condemnation of the temple uh, religious practices? That she felt compelled to give everything that she had and not have anything to live on because because of the temple practices. Or I don't know. Like oh, okay. it, it is how do you how do you hear that condemnation of the of that practice that like. He's saying no. Nobody's taking care of her. As a, right. in fact, they're taking advantage of her. If she is giving all she has to live on, who, who, what does she have to live on then? If the temple's not taking care of her. Well, and it's that last part that is, yeah, what makes the most is. Ideally, if she's giving, then the temple is taking care of her and is providing something for her. But it sounds like the way you're saying it, that that's not what's happening. No, I, I'm with you. Oh, you okay. know, maybe then she did go into another room and there was, you know, the the soup kitchen or the food pantry, hopefully. Um, Blankets or something. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so that your question of uh, most of us live comfortably. So she had two coins, right? She mm-hmm. could have kept one and only given one, and and she wouldn't have given all she had to live on. What what's your thought there about? Um, I mean, I think that's where most of us. I mean, even people who are tithing, you know, that they're the majority of. So if you're giving 10% of your income to the church or to, you know, the church and your favorite charities, you're still having the large majority of your income and hopefully still living comfortably and and giving out of joy and gratitude, not feeling uh, a burden by that call to generosity. Um, So she had two. She could have kept one. Mm -hmm. Why do you think she gave them both? I don't know. Well, that's Why do just you. Think? you <laughs> I just want to use our imagination for a moment. Oh, okay. You know, we okay. we don't know anything about this woman. Um, so the first critique would be she does she's not named. You know, unnamed people. Uh, yeah, but women often weren't named in the Bible. Thank you for lifting that up. Yes. Um, what do you think she would say about why she did this or who she was or you know we, um, so. Bible nerd side, there's two different words that in Greek New Testament used to describe poor people. Um, one is just kind of generic poor. Second is the poorest of the poor, more like a beggar. The word mm. used to describe her okay. poverty is the second. She's the, she's the poorest of the poor. Um, Jesus makes that clear. Not only was she a widow, but she was a poor widow. So in my imagination, yeah. she felt that um, those two coins, whatever they were worth, was better used by the temple in the practice of faith than what she would have spent it on, Mm -hmm. which might have been, you know, a small piece of bread or something, I love it, yeah. I love that. And I think that 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 is what makes it inspiring, um, that she thought that that was the best use of that money. And maybe that she had faith that more would come her way somehow. That was going to be my follow-up. What what do you think she did the next day? Or how, how did she... I guess it was your word beggar that put that there. So, you know, yeah. if this woman is, she's she's a widow. She's by herself. Yeah. Um, we don't know her age, I suppose. A widow could be any age. Sure. Um, you know, but she probably, she may have felt that, well, then I go to my, I go to the, well, I go to the wherever, the mm-hmm. market, and I will, you know, get another coin or two um, the same way that I've been, that, that she had received those. So maybe she just felt like well i'll have more coming my way i want to give this to the temple awesome have you have you heard this story referred to as the widow's might i have not so i like the what's what's a word that you know that can be spelled differently but sounds the same hominin homophone anyway might (laughs) as in strength so if i said to you widow's might as she, as the example in our story, the hero, mm-hmm. the strength of her faith, the strength of her example. But most people would, um, in terms of Bible study, widow's might, as in that coin was called a might, M-I-T-E. The Greek word is lepta, a small copper coin, the smallest of the coins circulated. 64 of these would equal one denarius, the daily wage. Okay. So one sixty-fourth of whatever... A, Anyway, it was tiny. She gives a little bit. Other people are giving a lot for a show. You know, maybe it hardly made a sound. Anyway, um, I just wanted to give that play on words. And then I want to tell a story that I think is is a good modern example because I think it connects to ways that we um, celebrate our community. So each person, you know, we can't do everything as a church, but we can do something each person can't do everything, but that feeling, you know, where you went with your imagination, feel like this is the best use of this gift. Um, I found this story told by Adelaide Halliday, who, um, like our UCC, there's a UCC in Canada, United Church of Canada. Okay. And she lived in Kenya one year. She wasn't uh, familiar with the local language, but she got accepted into the community. She would go to the church in her village. Um, she didn't understand everything in the language, but over time got used to kind of the, the rituals, what to expect, when to stand, when to sit. And one day something out of the ordinary happened. After the offering plates were brought to the front, a very old woman stood up and slowly started shuffling forward. She wondered what was happening, you know, looked around. Uh, other people in the congregation were straining their necks with curiosity to see what was going on. 
um, mostly seemed bewildered. And quietly, the woman shuffled forward until she was standing at the front of the table where the offering plates were. And everyone was watching her, and there was a hushed silence, and she gently placed something on the table and slowly shuffled her way back to her seat. And everyone sat in silence, um, but soon discovered what, what had happened. That morning, as she prepared to go to worship, the woman considered her own offering. She was very poor, had no money to give, still wanted to give something. She looked around her home, and to her delight, her hen had laid two perfect eggs. And she gathered those eggs up that morning, brought them to worship with her. It was these eggs, all that she had, that were offered that Sunday morning. Now, if that were all that were to happen that day, it would be a nice story, kind of go along with our scripture. Um, but it doesn't end there, because after the service that day, the community had what is called a harambi. It was a fundraiser where people bring things that are sold and the money goes to support the work of the church, kind of like our action auction. Mm-hmm. Those two eggs that the woman had offered during worship were eventually sold at the Harambee. There were only two eggs and could be bought at the market for a few cents, but the community knew this woman knew what a great offering it was, what a gift it was, and that day those two eggs were sold for over $10, more than some people would earn in an entire week. This woman's simple gift was offered with love and it was received with great mercy by her loving neighbors. It was given true worth during the Harambee. It was never about the eggs. It was about the giving and the receiving, the mercy and the love, the grace and the offering of friends and strangers. Trusting the community will support you when you give yourself to others. The word harambi is a Kiswahili word. It doesn't mean fundraiser. It means let's all pull together. And that day, the whole community pulled together in an amazing way. And uh, Adelaide says she never knew the name of this woman, but has carried her story with her for many years. This woman, this stranger, taught her a lesson, and I think taught all of us a lesson that we should never forget. It's really beautiful. And I think, you know, that's what it means to be a church. Like my, my little gift couldn't fund our ministry and mission. It takes all of our gifts and You know, sometimes I joke about, like, who would want to pay for the toilet paper or the lights? You know, everybody wants to pay for something new in the building or fund the outreach and mission. But it takes all of those little cents, all of those big dollars, all of those big and small gifts, because we can't we can't all do everything, but we all can do something. Um, And there are actually some people who bring eggs or uh, tomatoes or, you know, and and it contributes to uh, the whole church family and um you know, even our action auction things are just wonderful opportunities for people to come together. And some gifts are small and some gifts are big, but they're all received and given for the same purpose to glorify God and to share God's love in our community. Um, that is box? one of my favorite things about our auction is that most of the things that you bid on are um, group activities. So it's a way to continue to further the bonds and have that socialization with people. Um, which were still, I think, like a year and a half after the last auction, still getting some of those on the calendar um, because the pandemic uh, had had paused our ability to get together in some ways. But um, I really like the amplification of the gift. Yeah. And um, I mean, obviously, that was the point of the story. But just it was it's the same thing with the original widow is that, you know, maybe she only had two pennies, but um, the the act of giving that can contribute to what can be done with it. Um, And so I think that sometimes gifts can be money. Sometimes gifts can be time. Sometimes gifts can be a phone call Mm. and you might not think that it's making a difference, but it can have that amplification of effect. You can lift somebody's spirit so then they can go and do something else with their day that then has a ripple effect of positivity in the community. I mean, you just never know what a, a smile or a small offering of any gesture can um, can have an impact on people. Thanks for saying that. That's um, there have been several times um, when I've received something small or been able to give somebody something small that I just wanted to be a, a symbol of appreciation, and they've used the words, or I've used the words, "You made my day." I mean, something something you never know the the impact um 
that kindness and compassion and I mean really love love in action that's what our faith is all about um, and that inspires hope for the next day the financial contributions are obviously important because that's what's gonna you know buy the blankets that keep people warm right, right. but um, but I don't think that we should underestimate the other contributions that we can be giving even when we don't feel like we have the energy or the opportunity what was I reading yesterday um, Oh my gosh, I think it was in a seminar that I was in yesterday afternoon and it had to deal with depression and that the science behind it, I'm in this um, behavioral science mm-hmm. course right now that is fascinating by the way we could really dig into that one week. Um but the thinking is that um you have to uh, act to feel. Mm. So sometimes when you're in a depressed state you think you have to feel better in order to be able mm-hmm. to act. But the actual science behind it is that if you start acting, yeah. you'll feel better. And I think that that relates to this conversation. So the the fake it till you make it yeah, isn't faking it. Isn't faking it, right? No, it's it's, it's it, yeah, it it's actually like, starts uh, moving things. It's forward. like priming the pump. Right. Yes. Yes, that's what it is. Um yep. and I think I've heard that uh gratitude helps the the brain chemistry. Like Oh yeah, it's actually yeah, it, it is it makes you feel better. Mm-hmm. Like so if you focus on if you start with gratitude it makes things better sean aker yeah. is um a resource on that if anybody wants to google a c h o r i believe um and sean with a w but yeah he writes about happiness and that's one of his key practices if you can just like write about gratitude but you have to say the why so you can't just say like i'm grateful yeah. that it's sunny today you have to like put the specific because it helped me open my eyes or you know you like you have to do the because yeah so we put out, um, we subscribed through our uh, Christian education program to a gratitude resource that I believe was sent out with a church newsletter, and I believe I put in the weekly uh, bridge email. And if you're listening, don't receive those. Please uh, reach out to me. It's something simple, um, uh, every day something to uh, you know a, a conversation starter or a journal starter of something to be grateful for. I did it around the table. Uh, with my son and his girlfriend gave us a good conversation this week. I've done it with all the boards, you know, simple things like what, uh, what's a color that you're grateful for um, to deep things like what's a memory or a friend that you're grateful mm-hmm. for. Um, and something every day, you can print it up um, each week to do uh, with your family around the table. You can have the whole one pager. Um, or if you want to make a gratitude tree, there's even uh, leaves you can print up and write something you're grateful for and have that as a uh, centerpiece for your uh, table this month. I do love the gratitude calendar. That is it's just a really great tool to help force that. Um, yeah, so for me, a really big takeaway from the scripture this week is that you don't have to know what happens with what you give. You just have to give with the faith that it can do good in the world. Like the woman who did not know what her two eggs would do, but she knew that she wanted to give. Mm -hmm. So you start with the act and then it, you know, the ripple effect will create hopefully this, you know, benefit that's greater than you could have ever imagined. Thanks for saying that that way. Um, The faith um, in the Bible is, is more, the, the Greek word implies more the action of trust. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we think of faith as passive. You know, it's just mm-hmm. something I believe. But no, it, it has to be lived out. It has to be trusted that that what you're doing matters, that, that what you're doing can make a difference, and with the hope that it will make tomorrow a better day. And not just that people see you doing it, but that it's that it actually yes. is taking place. And that's that takes us back to the beginning of the scripture that Jesus was kind of critiquing. It, it doesn't matter making a show out of it unless, you know, that's part of the ritual of worship, which we want to lift up and, and, you know, not make a show out of it, but do something together that we're all enjoying that celebration, that the, that ritual matters. But if you're doing it, what Jesus is critiquing the, the scribes about is that they're pretending. Mm-hmm. And pretending is wrong. You're doing enjoying you know that's the liturgy the word liturgy and worship is is the work of the people we're doing this together we're giving god thanks and praise we're doing worship and that inspires us that's like priming the pump for the week and then we live a worshipful life the rest of the week it begins with our worship of god our love of god and then we take it to the world as our love of neighbor 
Thank you so much for this conversation. I Thank wasn't you. sure where it was going to go in the beginning. This was kind of fun. <laughs> you um, trusted. I did. You trusted that it would all work I've out for something good. I've learned to good. trust you. <laughs> well, um, do you have a final thought yeah. or prayer? I thought I'd uh, end with this blessing. Loving God, may we join you in creating justice for all. Secure our faith that we may be generous and live with joy. Give us peace to carry hope into all the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this podcast from Ivanhoe Congregational Church. We hope you'll join us for worship on any Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You can find us on Facebook or visit our website at ivanhoechurch.org. That's I-V-A-N-H-O-E church.org. We are an inclusive church in Mundelein, Illinois, living our faith with hope for tomorrow and celebrating our history dating back to 1838. We are strongly committed to social justice and responsible stewardship of God's creation. We extend God's extravagant welcome as revealed in Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We welcome all people to join our vibrant, diverse, and supportive faith community. Blessings to you with grace and peace.